Hello YouTube, back with the next BattleBots review, and today, as you can see, I've got the Tech for Kids Tombstone. I also have Bronco here off to the left here, reviewing him momentarily, but as you can see, this is a very reminiscent of Tombstone. These are, like, essentially kind of sort of hybrids between kits that you can build, as well as RC toys, and they're actually done pretty well with this, I have to say. I mean, there's obviously some differences compared to the real robot. You can see the, uh, there's the Tombstone logo, and see... This is actually not open. These are actually flat panels. I don't know if I can take one off and show you them. They may be difficult. Oh, okay. Maybe I can get this one off at least. And these are basically removable panels that will come off for to represent damage. And as you can see, they're actually held in relatively well. They're not going to just pop off automatically. Speaking of things that pop off automatically, this comes off pretty easily. There's nothing actually holding it in place, really. I mean, I guess it sort of holds in place here, but if you were to tip it upside down, it just falls right out. And one of the neat things about these is when it's powered and running... Okay, I can actually show it here. See if I can pop this off, because these are actually a different material. They're a little more rubbery and kind of... Uh, what do I describe? Yeah, they fit, they fit like a puzzle, but they fit pretty well. I mean, they fit pretty snugly. I mean, they're not going to just... I mean... If you drop it, sure, it'll probably some will come, probably come off, but they're held in pr place pretty well. They were kind of difficult for me to get in there in the first place. I remove this side because there's a little feature at the back here. This is the kill switch. So when the toy is hit, you will see a little spectacle happen taking shape here. Let's see if I can show it off here well enough for you. You saw those go flying. That's the idea. And if the toy is running when this takes place, see if I can show that as well, you will see the little blinking light. And that means the toy needs to be reset and your bot is dead. You lose, essentially. But, I mean, this is great fun. I can see without a doubt. These are obviously inspired by the original custom series. And, you know, they're kind of about that size. I took a comparison with the old Diablo toy I had, put it up, Tombstone is about the same length. And maybe a little narrower, but not off by much. Let's see, that's one basic function. I'm, I'm sure you're probably, yeah, I can't really control it with the remote, though, unfortunately, until I put it back together. So just give me a second, I'll get it reassembled here. I think the only part I need to reassemble is the top plate, and which basically slides into there's a long pole on it you can see here there's a long pole that sticks in here that helps reset that bit and that gets that back together and where the other okay here's the other panel and then of course obviously this will slide into place once you get it all set up and ready to go it goes in i would say pretty well i mean maybe a little I'd say it's kind of a bit of a snug fit, especially when you're you, know, you first get the toy. Once you've done it a, a couple dozen times, it will have that. And here's Tombstone's uh, remote. Let's see, it moved the wheel, and then the weapon is controlled with the top buttons. And as you can see, unfortunately. It does not stay spinning when you're actually running the toy. It's got a good amount of spin to it, as you can probably tell here. But the second I let go of the uh, the button, it does not. It stops spinning. It's probably the only downside to at least the toy part of it. But I mean, you know, see, I mean, look at the underside. There goes the panel again. Oh, and that's one thing I forgot to mention about the toy de deviation. There's a little wheel up front here. This is a little caster wheel. It's obviously just for balance on the toy. But, I mean, it works pretty well. I mean, I can see why they would kind of do that, considering the, you know, the actual toy is, I mean, it's going to be a little more top-heavy compared to the Hexbug version. I mean, I think even the Hexbug version is a little top-heavy. But nowhere near as much, because it's obviously lighter materials and all that. But this will also give you, if you can look carefully, you can see the little inner workings of how the uh, the weapon is connected. There's actually a motor back in here. And there's a whole series of gears that line up here. 
And this is where you change all the batteries. The battery cover is actually right here. It's a pretty sizable cover, and there's the on-off switch. These little holes up here were actually how this thing was held together in the packaging. Trust me, it is a pain. It's not just the, uh, the little twisty tie things, little wire shape, uh, the little silver wire shape things. It's more than that. They actually put tape on them on top of that. So you're not only like trying to get the tape off, you've got to twist those little thingies off. And as I've discovered with Bronco, it was a pain to get that one out. It wasn't too bad with Tombstone. They would have mostly, once I got the tape off, I was able to get around that and kind of play to that. You know, kind of get them get it out of there. But Bronco was a pain. The last one would not come out. And I'm wondering if that's... I don't know whether that was just, you know, unfortunate luck or whether that was just because Bronco was a longer bot than Tombstone. One thing I should note with these is the remote has no on-off switch. This will stay on until the sleep mode kicks in, which is in about two minutes. So, unfortunately, yes, I even confirmed there's no on-off switch in the battery cover either. I mean, I kind of looked at that to see if it was. And as you can see, it just went off just now. It's kind of unfortunate, and maybe just a little ploy to get you to more, buy more batteries, but luckily, they take pretty standard. I mean, I think, uh, you know, does it say on here? No. I believe it is two AAAs here for the remote, and four for the actual toy, the bot itself. But, uh, yeah, pretty well designed. I mean, it's relatively straightforward to put together. I mean, it would be nice if they had on-off switches for both toys. I mean, the original BattleBots toys did. But, I mean, this is obviously going to be great fun. I've had no issues with it so far. I mean, they've done a pretty solid job. I was kind of fearful when I was seeing the toys. There's not a lot of footage online. But from what I was seeing, they were coming off fairly easily. But I was kind of fearful they wouldn't stay on when you attach them. But they do. A little bit of extra help. I mean, it took a little bit to figure out how they were supposed to go. But, I mean, these are going to be, I think, going to be great fun, especially for kids. I don't have any kids to play with for, for this to work out, or little sisters and brothers or sisters or anything like that. But uh, I'd say these are going to be pretty solid. So I'm going to move on to uh, Bronco here. Put Tombstone aside. They won't uh, come apart on me. So here's Bronco. Pretty sizable, as you can tell. It takes up more than the whole, the whole screen. It's obviously it's like a bit of a hybrid in terms of its design. It's somewhat based on season one, but there's no wheel guards on the side. You can see the other side, there's nothing here. But again, it's, uh, I don't know what you call these up back here. The uh, tail, if you will, the fins. I don't know, that's probably what I'd call them. I'd call them fins. But he's got the usual same standard, uh, you know, these are all the armor panels up top. They're somewhat difficult to get in, but I think once you do it for a while, it may get a little bit easier. And here's the flipper. Flipper is, uh, doesn't go up very far, and as you'll soon see, it does not... You don't really get a whole lot of control with it. And what's important to note is that these wheels, there's no power to them. There's only power in the rear wheels. The rear wheels have power. These two do not, and I think these two are actually slightly higher off the, uh, off the floor here. I don't know whether that's just because of me. Yeah, they are. If you look carefully, these wheels are actually a tad higher up off the floor. So they don't move. They never move. Which is kind of unfortunate, but I think at the same time, I can kind of see why they did it. They want to make Bronco a little easier to turn. But you can rest assured these wheels are not going to come out very easily. And as uh, with the Tombstone, the, uh, there's a caster wheel on the bottom. It's now in the center to help balance it out. And these don't come out. These uh, little, uh, the front prongs up here don't come out. Let's see, there's, uh, there's some, of, some of the same holes that were... Uh, that are included, that are kind of embedded in the toy for its packaging when it's being packed. But yes, as you will find out, the there is a kill switch. I will show that off here. And unlike Tombstone, yeah, this is a little bit, uh, and there's the kill switch. Now Bronco's a little more involved in terms of putting back together. But you saw it with Tombstone, the same thing will happen. Let's see if I can kind of show it without actually showing it kind of thing. If you look there, there's a little piece of plastic. That actually comes out. That's what's connected to the kill switch. It's not like Tombstone where this piece would probably be what we connects it. I mean, I can certainly show it off, but it takes a little bit more time to actually get back together. So I guess if I'm going to show it off, I will not actually put it back together until after the review is over. But uh, let's see. Let's see if I have it on the right. Let me put it on the other side so you can see it a little bit better. 
There's gonna be a lot of panels flying. It's gonna be just the left. Should be just the left side. Let's see if I can. Uh... There you go. Hope it caught on camera well. And this is the panel. This slides in. So when the toy is activated, the same thing will happen. Although you notice on Bronco, you can't see the. Uh... This should be Bronco. Yeah. Yeah. It should be Bronco's remote, and it should somewhere tell me that the oh I have to probably turn it on of course but yep if you look carefully Bronco's actual uh, electronics are inside you can't see it that well but there's a little flashing yeah there it is that's a little bit of detail on it that will tell you the toy needs to be reset but it's a lot harder to tell than on tombstone because all the panels are you know so the only thing I would basically have to reset is this now it's solid green, I can show you the flipper, which is, as I said, pretty disappointing. Hmm. Not responding to the remote. Oh, it could be the wrong, that could be too, no, 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 I don't think so. Yep, there we go, had the wrong remote. That's all you get, and in case you were ever curious, I'm on the other, my finger's on the other uh, button here, so if you can, uh... it does the exact same thing. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here, and of course, see now it's the wheel that's now closest to the camera is turning, and of course, use the other side. It's just the back ones that move again. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, the fact that uh, they went through all this trouble. This is uh, two stones, I'll put that aside there. I mean, this is pretty solidly built. It's unfortunate that all the, uh, you know, there are all these little caveats in place that are, uh, you know, there's not much. I mean, they take, they do take, I and mean, there's a couple things they could do to improve on it. Whether or not you think this is, you know, an oversight regarding the batteries for the remotes, or... An actual deliberate ploy, so you buy more batteries. I mean, I could I could see both honestly being true, to an extent. But I think in some ways, you kind of get. I mean, they you know gotta get a credit credit where credits due here. I mean, they did pretty well designing these toys. They're not gonna break easily. I mean, granted, they're not meant for a huge amount of like high speed impact or anything like that. But they're pretty cool for what they're worth. I mean. I think they're about the same price as the uh, two, as you know, a two pack from Hexbug. They were not by Hexbugs, they're by Tech for Kids. Just in case you're still confused here, but very solidly built, and these are solid plastic, unlike the actual like sort of foam rubbery pieces like back here. But they go on pretty well. I mean, the instructions are pretty straightforward. This is uh, gonna go in the middle here. So actually, I guess it doesn't take too much effort to put back together. Especially once you get used to it. I mean, that went on pretty easily. I'm kind of sort of familiar with this by now. So, pretty brilliantly designed. I mean, it could be better. I'm hoping that if they make more, they'll make improvements. Maybe they'll see this video and make the improvements that way. So that we won't have to deal with the issues with the remote. I mean, it's probably an oversight. It's pretty, I, it's a pretty minor thing to fix. I mean, all they'd have to do is probably insert an on-off switch. Probably somewhere, I mean, some of the details are here that could be removed. But, yeah, pretty decently designed, I have to say. I mean, uh, I was a little surprised that how, how durable, I mean, I haven't actually battle-tested it yet. I've kind of just driven it around a bit. But this is a fun little feature. I like the kill switch. I mean, that is probably a key feature that the Hexbug toys do not have. They also have more panels that can pop off. I mean, the kill switch on its own is probably good. They didn't even have to have this extra mechanism, but they did anyway. And basically, that that adds a little extra fun. It's like your bot basically basically just exploded on uh, impact from the last. I mean, sometimes you can hit the wall. I've under I've heard the other. T I've kind of read the other two at least. Either I think blacksmith has a difficult. It's a really difficult kill switch to hit. But I think other than that, this is a pretty awesome toy. I would say kudos to uh, Tech for Kids. And they and blacksmith was only made in this toy line. So they were not. They have yet to be made. With Hexbug, I guess there's always that chance that it could be this year. So yeah, that's my review on the Tech for Kids Tombstone and Bronco RC toys. Thanks for watching. Ugh. Ugh.
Okay. Gosh darn it. It's so easy to turn on. I can't turn you off again. That's okay. And you should be able to just pop that in place. Okay, yeah, it's almost in there. It's just about in there. Just a little bit tightening up. Okay. Okay. Don't tell me my video.